Hello, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. And uh, starting off with the uh, fundamental week ahead in the data, um, and you can find us on Trading Economics uh, website, tradingeconomics.com. If you go to tradingeconomics.com, go to the week ahead uh, square uh, tab and it will take you to this. And so just zooming in a bit, uh, so in the week ahead, we've got a busy week in the US with the focus on the February jobs report, jolts, job openings, foreign trade figures, and speeches by several Fed officials. Elsewhere, key data releases will cover China's inflation uh, and trade data and GDP updates from the UK, the Eurozone, and Japan as well. So uh, central banks in Canada, Australia, Japan uh, will be deciding on monetary policy and you can have um, a read of the details and what really the market is expecting uh, if you scroll further down, which I advise you to do. And uh, getting on to some of the technicals and a little bit more fundamentals as to what happened uh, last week and potentially going into the future. Um, we start off on the dollar index and with the dollar index, uh, starting off fundamentally, oh, Actually, as it goes, I should really talk about China, but I will talk about the uh, um, uh, the Fed first before I talk about China. So, um, you know, Fed's daily C uh, says more rate hikes likely in needed to cool inflation. Yeah. So if you understand about why and the fundamentals as to why a, um, a central bank has to employ um, measures and monetary policy to attempt to appreciate a currency to counter inflation, which is actually inflation is the devaluation of a currency, then you'll understand why, um, you know, with inflation going higher, um, you know, why the Fed, or not say inflation isn't necessarily going higher, but inflation is a bit sticky at the moment. And so the Fed have a 2% target. And so the Fed really want to try and push uh, inflation, get inflation down to their 2% target, but also at the risk of potentially triggering a uh, contraction in the economy. Because if you hike too much, uh, borrowing and lending becomes more expensive and it can lead to a contraction in the economy. So um, all central banks at the moment are really prioritizing fighting inflation and getting inflation down. And so Fed's daily basically says uh, more hikes are likely. And so you have to kind of go with the big money, regardless of what you think your personal opinion is. Uh, when the smart money talk, it's it's best that you're probably likely to go with them. Of course, they're not always right. Um, but at the end of the day, um, personally, if that's what they're saying they're going to do and, and the data supports that narrative, then pretty much that's uh, what we have to do as um, you know fundamentalists, right? <clears throat> And so Federal Reserve Bank uh, of San Francisco President Mary Daly said policymakers will likely need to raise rates, uh, interest rates higher and maintain them at an elevated level or elevated levels for a longer period of time. It is clear there is more work to do, Daly said in a speech uh, Saturday at Princeton University in New Jersey in order to put this episode of high inflation behind us further policy tightening maintained for a longer time will be necessary. And so that's really what the market is pricing in. So the dollar should want to appreciate, um, at least in, in the short term. Now, going back to China and uh, China's economy shows strong recovery as COVID zero era ends. And why is this relevant really to the US dollars? Because it actually, China reopening acts as a counter to dollar appreciation. And um, it's really because um, the dollar has acted over the past, you know, couple years as a risk off currency. And uh, with China reopening, global, that, you know, spurs global growth, which is basically more risk on because China is the world's economic engine. And if they're reopening uh, after this zero COVID, you know, years of zero COVID um, uh, lockdown, and now they're the last ones really major economy to come out of this uh this uh, zero COVID uh, lockdown, then they're going to be investing in infrastructure projects, um, and uh, and so money is going to flow into or out of the dollar typically and into other areas, right? So um, under be other beneficiaries of um, of China growing, which means you got you know commodity currencies and commodities and emerging market currencies um, will 
benefit from China reopening and being more of a, uh, uh, the environment being more risk on. And so money flow out of the dollar into other um, uh, asset classes, right? And so that is a counter to um, the dollar going higher. So as much as I am, um, you know, I've got a bias in the short term on, on dollar longs for now. And of course, the data has to still support that narrative. Um, once the data changes or if the data changes on the dollar, then um, and it doesn't support more rate hikes for longer, then I will change my bias and go, um, you know, to the to the short side because overall I am actually um, bearish. But in, I think in the short term, I think there is some dollar appreciation to come towards the end of the year. The dollar should devalue, and that's being supported by a lot of um, a lot of banks, right, and a lot of bank analysis that we do look at outside of uh, what I show you in the video. So um, going to the technicals. I would expect any pullbacks to uh, some supply zones to be, um, uh, for me anyway, is, is my is my bias. I do think now that the dollar, like I said, is a my bias is to buy dollars if you get a pullback and the data supports that narrative, right? The data supports higher for longer. If the data doesn't support that, then pretty much my uh, bias would be a uh, would be to the short side so if you are looking short going short and then trying to anticipate um maybe uh inflation coming down um then this is really the area that you're looking towards in terms of uh trying to get short and these are the areas on the dollar index and again you're not necessarily getting short on the dollar index you're just using this more as a confluence on other dollar crosses so if you're in a supply zone and you want to get short if you're in a supply zone um if you want to get short on the dollar cross, then that's really what you're looking uh, towards uh, because we're in a nice area in the dollar index. If you want to go long on the dollar index um, or long on the dollar, then you're looking at prices putting back into a demand zone and then looking at, you know, something like the dollar yen or the dollar Swiss, for example, to pull back into a demand zone before getting more um, well, actually a supply zone before actually getting um, uh, short on that dollar. But my bias is still for the dollar to at least, if it pulls back in the short term, to try and look for some long trades. Uh, so moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen. The yen is something I am interested in. I'm watching uh, uh, carefully um, with regards to um, their them changing their monetary policy. They've just announced um, a, well the likelihood of a new governor. Uh, I think he pronounces his name as Udia, and at the moment he seems to want to continue more of the dovish uh, monetary policy uh, that um, his predecessor Karuda has um, or is employing right now. But the market pretty much thinks that that should come to an end at some point, and so there is the opportunity to i think short the uh, the euro sorry the euro the uh, the 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 dollar yen at some point now again my bias at the moment in the short term would be uh for the uh, dollar to go higher and so for me um i am looking at more demand zones uh on a pullback like this even better would be somewhere around the 130s but again that just really depends on um if price pulls back um but the uh, the, the bank of japan are not looking to um you know change monetary policy then that will be a decent buy but i do think that the yen at some point within the next uh, few months um is likely to be a buy but you know i'm gonna um this is on the watch list. It's not necessarily, not necessarily uh, long or short on this pair. Dollar Swiss is something that I, again, I am actually long on or I have a long bias for now. So zooming in a bit, any pullbacks to a decent demand zone area, I think is gonna be a decent buy. And again, as long as the data supports the, the narrative of going um, long on that dollar. Uh, if you're looking to buy the Swiss franc, then I think now is a decent time technically. Uh, and here are some levels slightly above you to look for uh, some um, some buy trades on the uh, 
on the Swiss franc, but I do think any pullbacks for now into at least the uh, 0.924s um, are decent areas to look for potentially a, uh, a long trade or again that's not necessarily financial advice but that's really where my bias would be um, if I'm buying the um, the dollar Swiss dollar CAD again is something that I'm interested in uh, the dollar being a buy the US dollar being a buy and really looking at these areas of demand for any opportunities I think a deeper pullback into I think this zone the 134s 1.3474s would be even better an even better discount to look for any kind of long trades um, on this currency pair so yep yeah, I think that's a decent zone if you're looking to go short then you do have uh, quite a wide area of supply um, in fact it probably comes all the way up to uh, yeah it would probably come all the way up to here um, it doesn't look pretty on the chart so when you get a situation like this what you want to do where you got a really wide zone of supply is break that into or break that down into um, where you would trade support and resistance because you can trade the two right and you should really look to employ both there's definitely supply in and around these areas but where exactly would the supply you know where exactly would price or oh, is likely to reverse one of the things you can do is look towards uh, levels of support and resistance in this case resistance within a wide area uh, of supply um, but again my bias is more to the long side so for me I'm not really looking up up top I'm looking at really pullbacks into some of these areas uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar um, the New Zealand dollar interesting actually came down into I think this area here of demand uh, demands quite a wide zone to be fair actually that no, was right here that's it pulled back into <clears throat> this lower zone which actually had a um, an area of resistance in that just at the top of that zone right there in fact you'd have to probably draw it somewhere there it was a bit of a minor level right there the most recent zone was right there because you have for example a little bit of support a little bit of resistance resistance support you can see it bounced on the, off the top of that area right there on the top of the uh, demand zone so if you do want to be a buyer with a New Zealand dollar uh, you know now is pretty much your time looking for pullbacks into that zone if you are looking for short trades then there's a supply zone right there and you've also got another supply zone around there now this is not a pair that I'm particularly interested in at all so um, unless for example the uh, uh, I think the US stop um, hiking rates and um, and China reopen because I think the uh, New Zealand dollar will benefit from from China reopening due to the the, the geographic location they're quite close um, geographically to China and uh, I think they're one of Ch uh, China's their biggest uh, trade trade um, uh, partner so um, yeah that's really where you're looking at either buys or sells looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar uh, we do have uh, the pound has been a really kind of tricky one in terms of in terms of sentiment and I guess going to uh, really kind of understanding um, why I would still probably have a more of a bias to, to short this uh, to short the pound would be traders see lower peak Bank of England rate, as Bailey says, nothing decided. So Governor cautioned against assuming Bank of England will need to do more. Money markets trimmed bets on terminal rate uh, in current cycle. And so the UK government bonds rallied as investors uh, honed in on comments from the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey that uh, cast doubt over the pace of further interest rate hikes. So short end bonds led uh, the advance with yield and two year notes falling as much as 11 basis points to 3.75%, um, 3.57%, sorry. Uh, money markets trimmed bets 
on the Bank of England's terminal rate by some 10 basis points to imply around 77 basis points of additional hikes by the end of the year. And so um, what that means basically to the layman is that the money markets are and the bonds, bond, bond traders, I guess, are um, trimming their bets, meaning that uh, they're not expecting the Bank of England to hike as much as previously expected uh, due to the uh, Governor Bailey, um, his comments, right? And so um, what you know you may see is, uh, the, even though the, the, the pound may rally a little bit, I still think the pound is actually uh, a short. So my bias would be to look for supply zones if we do get a rally up into any of these uh, supply zones. Because on one hand, you've got one central bank looking to continue we go back to, for example, the Fed talking about, you know, the Fed says more more rates are likely, right? Whereas if you go to, for example, the pound and you have, you know, traders basically saying that, in fact, they think that the, uh, the Bank of England may not hike as much as previously expected. Um, for me, you have if prices can pull back to these types of areas. I do think that's a decent area to look for uh, short trades and even better would be something up here but again this would have to be data uh, data dependent you know it wouldn't just be you know just just um, trading that out of the blue um, just because there's a supply zone there um, moving on to the uh, euro dollar and the euro dollar um, again I did say my bias was to the long side I actually didn't get into this trade uh, because I'm already in uh, two um, Euro trades and one of the things I, I say to traders is not to get into too many or don't be too top heavy on a on a pair so the uh, the trades that I'm actually in um, are the uh, the Euro Swiss which I'm going to talk about by the way uh, in my trade of the week so Euro Swiss right and the Euro cat right and my two uh, pairs that I'm still currently in and so because I was still in these trades I don't want to add another euro trade right just in case something happens with uh, you know the euro right and then you end up losing all three you could yes win all three but you know it's really understanding risk right risk is you know paramount and so forget you know the rewards if you understand about managing your risk you know for me I mean I will enter into three I'd have to be really bullish on on the euro and very bearish on the pairs that I'm trading the euro against but I'm not even though I think the euro should go higher against the dollar eventually right now um, I think the euro is I'm um, sorry the dollar is um, you know fairly um, strong in terms of you know it appreciating so um, I didn't think that it was going to go as high and there's no point in you know jumping into that trade and so um, yeah but I do think overall you know within the next uh, coming months you should see um, you know the euro at least go to one uh, tens, one fifteens is one of the forecasts by the end of the year, and really the uh, the euro fundamentally uh, does have the, the same issues as um, the US, which is basically so uh, high inflation. So you know ECB half point March rate hike very likely the guard says and she also says as a quote i cannot tell you how high rates will go which sounds actually quite hawkish um christine the guard comments in an interview with el correro correro so um yeah so euro area inflation hits record so they're gonna have to um you know um, central banks have to raise the borrowing rate cost by another half point at its march decision according to President Christine Lagarde. And it's very likely that we will raise rates about 50 basis points um, when asked uh, what would happen later this month. Uh, this is a decision that uh, was indicated at our last monetary policy meeting. And all the numbers we have seen in recent days are confirming that this interest rate hike is very, very likely. And so um, pretty much really it's been priced in, right? This has really been priced in already. So if you're looking to kind of get into the euro, um, don't expect any massive major surprises, you know, on the day. Um, it, the market is more forward looking and it would be more about what the next hike is going to be, right? And whether they're going to hike by 25 or 50 basis points um, in the future and what they say at their, um, at their conference. And so 
looking towards um, the the technicals um, I would really expect I mean I could expect prices to go you know Eve slightly lower I think the lower end of this area of this of where price could potentially go is somewhere around the 10 would be maybe the 103s to 102s I think that's probably maybe the limit of the move and again that really kind of depends on the data but I think anywhere around here um, if you do want to be a buyer of the euro dollar is you know a buyer but is the dollar is the euro you know is the would you really want to jump in on that euro dollar is it really going to go high or higher or trend if you've got two competing central banks looking to appreciate their currencies for me um, you know what you're really looking for is more convergences or divergence trades where you have uh, central banks one central bank is maybe hiking rates another one is cutting rates or one that is you know holding rates etc so you buy the one that is hiking rates over the one that is holding or cutting yeah or you would basically buy the one that is um, holding over one that is cutting for example so um, that's the way you know uh, it typically works and so um, for me although I do have a bias on this um, I think there are better uh, opportunities uh, fundamental and um, currency trading pairs than the uh, than buying the euro against the dollar um, but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro dollar then now is pretty much your time if you want to be a seller on the euro dollar then pretty much any pullbacks into this higher area of uh, supply is where you're looking at getting involved uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar an Aussie dollar um, I think the Australian dollar for me is a buy again not really against the um, the US dollar right um, because again the uh, US dollar is is quite uh, strong now uh, from a buying perspective you're looking at this demand zone um, the Australian dollar didn't really have great numbers uh, this week but what was helping it is really China reopening and I think the market has looked past the current data um, and really looking forward to you know China's reopening which helps the Australian dollar to appreciate um, the Australian um, RBA the central bank are committed to hiking uh, in the next or oh, this week and so really ultimately um, they are still a bank that is hiking rates and may hike at the next meeting as well so again pretty much um, I wouldn't say even uh, Stephen at the moment but uh, actually matter of fact it's probably more even um, I do think that maybe the dollar's got a bit more stronger sentiment just slightly at the moment but ultimately if you do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar I think now or even a dip down into the 6650s or 66 round numbers I think is going to be an absolute bargain um, and this would be a definitely a, a really nice uh, swing trade to the upside once that um, dollar in the Fed start to hike rates and if China do reopen um, and grow right this 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 is going to be the trade that I, I would look to get into as well as some others um, looking at gold before we get into my trade of the week and gold um, on the daily zooming out uh, I think with the dollar actually getting stronger temporarily we did have actually this whole area here was demand yeah with the dollar getting stronger temporarily I would expect there to be at least you know another potential pullback if the dollar does you know come in and the data sports narrative and the uh, Fed continue to hike rates I would expect something like this but ultimately I think as we go into the uh, the, the rest of the year the next uh, six months to nine months I think the, uh, the that gold is going to be a buy right mm -hmm. gold is a buy um, if you can get gold at these levels then maybe that 1780s 1740s I think that's going to be really nice um, for a potential buy um, and have a buy bias on this um, but if you do want to get short on gold and um, look for the potential to take advantage of a stronger dollar as well then you're really just looking at uh, this area here so basically prices will always pull back and uh, I do think that prices may start to auction or range what traders would call a range fair value auction at some point um, 
but I do think a deeper pullback is going to be a really nice opportunity to buy uh, to buy some gold or at least to look to trade some gold if you do trade gold um, you also do have an area that this has been uh, traded from a support and resistance area so that adds a lot of confluence to that zone you can see where business was being done in the past so the pullback from that area is is decent but um yeah i think any kind of buys on gold especially around here now is going to be where you probably want to look for buying uh, gold not financial advice of course you know do your research if you are a gold bug then you know or gold trader then i think any like i said any pullbacks into this zone here is going to be the first area but any move even below that i think is going to be uh, decent i think the next area probably down would be somewhere around here as well um, of interest anyways uh, so uh, getting into the uh, trade of the week euro swiss uh, franc and for me uh, this trade has been uh, quite profitable i'm still in one position which nearly hit you know my final uh, target not quite so when it comes to targets what i typically do and i use the word typically right don't do it every single time but normally um, I have uh, a few targets, one of them being 50% fair value of, you know, a high and a low, right? High and a low, expensive bargain price. If I'm buying at bargains, then I'll have a 50% uh, fair value. And I also have a take profit of 80%, which I might take half of that. Now, if you're new to the channel or new to uh, trading 180, one of the things I do, um, if you haven't seen this before, is that I break trades up into three or four. So um, this was really the trade. Ultimately, I got in at the 90, uh, 0.9869 area, right? And I had a 15 pip stop and I was probably around about a pip or two, you know, um, uh, before being stopped out. And my broker prices came down. I thought oh, I'm about to get stopped out didn't happen right which is which is brilliant now again i explained this in last week's video but i'll explain it in this week's video as well so no in fact sorry apologies it wasn't my entry wasn't there my entry was at the 9872s sorry i had so i had three entries right so break your well, what i do anyways i break my trade up into three so one is there two was the second one was at the 9869s or 9870s with a stop loss at the same area and then i have a third order right right at the absolute lows which was at the 0 0.9861 area right and I'm not going to show you the exact entry on the lower time frame, right? But just know that it was a lower time frame entry, and these are the entries as prices come down. Now, not guaranteed to get into all three. Sometimes you get a pullback, or a lot of times you do get a pullback into the 50%, um, you know, uh, area of where my entry and uh, uh, and the low of the swing would be, and um, and so I typically, you know, do a, do some pending orders, some buy limit orders. Um, if prices do come down so I can get a better price and also as well I get heavier as prices or I increase my risk size as prices come down so the top the market order which was then 0 0.9878 uh, um, uh, uh, market order is 0.1% yeah the middle uh, pending order is 0.2% yeah and then the last pending order is 0.2% three percent yeah so now if i get in triggered at, at, in this example um i got triggered into all three in this trade i got triggered into all three so i will take the two to one on the 0 0.3 percent yeah so that's now 0 0.6 percent banked now i only have 0 0.3 percent in the market and then i can swing trade the rest right so i'm swing trading the first position that i entered up to 80 percent the second position the pullback up to um fair value which ended up being a nice 4.35 to 1 uh trade and um and so overall 
yeah um, that ended up being uh, the 0.2 percent position ended up banking you know zero point you know I think it's like 0 0.8 0 0.9 percent something like that because that was about four times yeah and now I've got that 0 0.1 percent position swing trade and it didn't quite hit the highs it's pulled back a little bit um, but you know that will be swing traded and if I feel that prices will go higher then I'll just you know keep it beyond the 80 percent um, which I do actually think it probably will go higher so I might just take up half position there and then let it swing so ultimately uh, this trade has netted me um, over you know one percent and um, you know it could obviously um ultimately uh, net me a bit more and so that's really how you know i trade any entries however i enter break them down into either three you know uh trades or four trades yeah depending on how bullish or bearish you are um on a trade and uh that's really how it's um, how I manage um, my trades and that was really my trade uh, of the week and it wasn't necessarily I didn't take it this week obviously I took it a few weeks ago but um, you know it was going sideways for a while and then um, prices decided to you know go where it wanted to and really kind of fundamentally the reason why um, you know I was long on this was because you know I'm obviously a buyer of the euro and I think the Swiss franc in a risk on environment doesn't necessarily you know do well and so um, you know if you're looking at divergences euro Swiss has a I think a bigger divergence than something like for example the euro dollar and so you know choosing the best pairs fundamentally um, is what you know you want to do and then hopefully that plays out in the market because no one knows exactly if it will or if it won't but if it does then you can have the confidence to hold your trade because you understand you know you're not just snatching at profits because you you know would know that or you have a degree of confidence that prices should go in your favor and if you're right about the fundamentals then you'd be able to swing trade right so that's pretty much you know how it works and so now just waiting for any kind of pullbacks if you get pulled back into that zone i'll probably re-enter again into maybe the lower zone if not if i lose that you know 0.1 percent doesn't matter because um you know i've already banked over one percent on that trade anyways guys that's it for this week i uh, hope you enjoyed the video um let me know if you have any questions and i'll try and get back to you uh as soon as possible take care have a blessed week Hi everyone, I uh, wanted to make this uh, video on the dollar Swiss and it was a trade setup. Um, I didn't take this trade, but I know it was, um, I did some analysis and I think it was for uh, for Spencer who um, at the time was looking to go long on the um, uh, dollar Swiss, right? And uh, just a little tip, if you type in uh, trading view in the search bar, you'll get um, pretty much all of the, um, charts that I pretty much you know post um, and obviously you can you know if you, if you click on them you can you know check what was what the context of it in terms of you know why you would want to you know what was happening at the time and the conversation probably surrounding that if there was one but um yeah so the 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 actual chart I wanted to have a look at was was this one and again I think it was uh, it was a uh, Spencer uh, that um, basically wanted to go long on this on this uh, currency pair and I was about to delete the analysis because I hadn't looked at this for a, for a little bit and then I realized I thought oh yeah this would be actually um, you know a, a really good example of um, you know just some fundamental analysis first of all as well as you know some technicals now um, just to guess you know put this into again some some more context is was that um, there was obviously some um, British price action something fundamentally I think it might have been I think it might have been the jobs numbers on the 3rd of February I can't remember exactly what it was it was either that or some sort of CPI number but the point is is that you know the dollar was now looking like a uh, was then looking like a buy right and I did some analysis as far as you know pull back into the zone before you know potentially going long now I didn't know how long that was going to take you know again this was the original you know analysis um, right here so you can have a look 
But what ended up happening was was prices came down. Now, why this zone? This is the this is the question, right? So why this zone in particular? Well, there's there's a number of reasons. Um, first thing is that it was um, not just a level of you know support and resistance that had been traded, um, you know, obviously traded, but there was as I put here, there was traders uh, who were caught going short, right? So a lot of uh, traders who go um, who went short in and around this move here or wanted to go short at this move here um, you know uh, and didn't get a chance to would have definitely been looking for a trade here and so um, and we typically would be right in terms of if you're you know fundamentally short on the dollar Swiss then this is pretty much the best area to look for a short trade at the time not knowing what was coming uh, in the future or maybe a couple of hours later and then once um, you know these traders got got kind of caught going short on that level of you know support and resistance, yeah, or resistance there, right? Um, they've been they've committed capital, and then all of a sudden they get caught because prices have gone against them. So that's the the, the capture phase of the. Uh, the trade right because loss aversion bias kicks in they move and remove their stop losses the pain sets in as prices go against them the pain is looking at their um their unrealized uh you know loss and um instead of accepting maybe one or two percent now they're down 10 15 percent on their account right 20 percent depending if they're you know over leveraged and so you know when you're looking at a level of um of um, the uh, of support and resistance or supply and demand, it's really important to understand the motivations of why there is likely to be more demand than supply at a level. It's not just good enough to say, okay, yeah, you know what, that's a level of you know support resistance. That's a level of demand. You have to understand why. First of all, fundamentally, you would want to be a buyer at a dollar over the Swiss franc, and also as well why. Um, there's likely to be more demand orders than supply orders, right? So this area here, trade is going short, pain, and then you've got relief. Now the relief is where traders who went short here would have been uh, to, to exit their trade at maybe a small loss or a break even, which is the next best trade after you know going through um, you know a massive drawdown on their account or unrealized drawdown. When prices start to come back down, they want some pain relief. And then if they went short here, then they have to basically buy to exit, right? They have to buy to exit. And um, and then there's traders who are trading just support and resistance, looking to buy here. You know, they have no idea. They're just pressing buy, setting pending orders or, um, you know, whatever orders they are or looking for entries in and around this area. They're looking to buy. And anyone who went short anywhere up here is probably looking for to take profit and if you go short here then again to take profit you have to do what buy in and around here you've also got you know the dollar which was a buy at the time against the swiss franc and so there yeah, there we had <laughs> you know there we have it right and so you know that was the initial you know bounce now we did come back further right and this is again due to uh liquidity this is due to um, not everybody got a chance to buy and when I say everybody I'm talking about not retail traders but institutional you know banks etc remember they have to accumulate and buy over a certain period of time right and so you know when when it's okay for us to just place a place an order a couple of orders but they need to avoid liquidity um, uh, slippage right and so if there's not enough liquidity uh, to buy enough orders right and, and fill their books as they want to then um, you know they, they you know the, the, the market makers I guess are tasked with um, uh, ensuring that there's enough opportunity for them to buy at some point right and so this is basically what happened again Again, right so when prices started to come down and nothing had changed fundamentally for the dollar they could get even an even better price yeah and you can see it basically drove prices even higher and so um, and so yeah this area here this demand zone and again nobody knows where nobody knows exactly where the turning point is going to be right but you can you know be uh, I guess fairly confident that when prices start to come down, 
if fundamentally and sentiment wise you still want to be a buyer of the dollar this is going to be a cheap area and you can pretty much see you know where they again ended up um stop hunting traders right so if i kind of delete a lot of this stuff um off the chart you can actually see the stop hunt you know below traders would have been going um traders would have been going probably long at that area of uh intraday you know support one two it stop hunts all the the the, the traders below yeah so you've got that move to the upside would have drawn in a lot of traders because at the time you know who who's not going to go long at that area right who's not going long at that you know um uh, that level of obvious support and if you even extend that back that's very accurate right a very accurate level of support and resistance you know um not everyone can get involved in this trade right the, the institutions don't want everyone to get involved in this trade and so um you know the average day trader would have looked to get involved in that trade you know just just taking that as a level of uh, support it stop hunts everybody as they you know put their stop losses below that and then, you know, you see actually that the big money ended up, you know, pushing money higher, which is basically what they wanted to do because they wanted to buy dollars um, over the Swiss franc. So uh, again, going back to, you know, the analysis that was on the uh, the sixth of um, of February, right here, you can pretty much see what happens. Now, this is a CPR that typically, typically, typically. Um, is 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 middle of the auction and um as you're learning i would probably caution maybe against taking these types of trades unless you're really confident on the fundamental side of things um typically you want to trade at auction uh lows or an obvious auction those and obvious auction highs um in the context of looking at you know where we are on the daily time frame chart right so you're trading if you're looking at a daily time frame chart really the obvious auction low would be somewhere down here um, this would be actually considered potentially, you know, I say potentially, but this would be considered more fair value. Um, and obviously this would be considered more expensive if you're looking at, you know, buying the dollar. Now there's nothing wrong with buying at fair value, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but just in the context of um, uh, where the best place is to buy, you're always looking at lows rather than fair value. But of course, you can start to you know trade at fair value, but what I would say is if you are trading around fair value, um, don't put as much um, of, 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 of your you know, max risk on fair value than you would, for example, at maybe the lows of, a, of, of, a, of, a, of an auction. So um, if, you're, if you normally trade, I don't know, 0.5%, right then maybe just trade at least maybe half that right 0.25 percent but you'd put more money on the fact that this is the better place to buy if it does come down here of course you don't necessarily want to miss out on that move if you know you have a strong bias so you know just in case you know the market doesn't um agree with you in terms of you know where the the, the immediate bargain is right then and the prices come down here at least you've only lost 0.25 percent but this area here would be the best place to look for buying and then that would be where you'd probably put a bit more on or your normal position size and if that if the market agrees with you that that is a bargain then prices should want to go um, a lot higher so that's really where we are better risk reward down at the lows um and uh yeah i thought that was a really interesting um uh, really interesting uh chart you know in terms of uh, the actual way that it played out you know you've got for those of you who understand you know uh, market making you've got that unfair auction that needed to be completed and actually it was completed right there right so the unfair auction started right there it was probably mostly completed there partially but then obviously there as well that was obviously the completion of the unfair auction um an institutional flow push prices to the upside so yeah very 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 nice um you know trade setup i'm not too sure if spencer got involved in this i'd have to ask but um yeah the analysis was uh pretty uh spot on in terms of um you know what what we actually said at the time and um and yeah so fabrice on the sixth and that was where we are and so 
yeah anyways i hope you enjoyed that and um really got uh, some use out of it and again it's not just about looking at um support and resistance or supply and demand because their supply and demand is everywhere remember fundamentals first right why is why are you buying why are the banks buying why are they likely to buy at certain areas and then looking at the higher and lower time frames or the higher time frames first then going down into the lower time frames if it's in a good spot on the higher time frame if it's in the, the setup is in a bargain area on a higher time frame then brilliant you know that this is a decent area to look for buying on a, on a lower time frame and uh yeah that's pretty much it all right guys take care and speak to you soon